Hello again. Andorra is an English essay. I wrote it after I had written a German book on the small country of the Pyrenees. I will read you chapter four, which is called Night and Life. Without professional equipment, it is quite difficult to take photographs at night. Thus, I had to count on my eyes and ears and my memory. In spite of its distinct rural character in former times, Andorra's modern society is urban. This and the fact that many tourists visit the country made me believe that there would be some dazzling nightlife. Alas, I felt more and more bewildered as I could not find what I had expected. There is one theater in Andorra la Vella and another one in San Julia de Loria. Culture and Congress centers sometimes offer concerts, but they seem rather infrequent. You should not expect different dramas for different days. You shouldn't even expect the same theater performance over a longer period. No, you have to study carefully the production schedule, because there may be about two performances a month, and it is the same with concerts. Of course, there is an exception, festivals. Several towns stage cultural festivals, usually during the summer months. Andorra la Vella has two cinemas at most. They offer Spanish movies, sometimes they are in Catalan. I also suspect that from time to time you will find something in French, but I wasn't able to verify this within the Pulton. Someone told me that the hotels would organize cinema sessions for their guests. My hotel, Marovre Hostel, didn't offer anything, not even breakfast. It was cheap. Every morning I had to leave and to go to a snack bar to get coffee and a sandwich or croissant. Usually I don't have a problem with that, but in uh, 2007 the street in front of my hostel underwent some major construction works and the noisy nights really challenged my patience. Leaving at night looked like a way out, but I found myself in a curiously quiet town where only few people wandered around, most of them tourists who had the same experience as I did. So, no theater, no concert, no cinema. Some restaurants, yes, but I was not willing simply to eat for hours. Hmm, nightclubs? Now, I laugh about this idea. There is not a single nightclub in Andorra, and if we go one step further, the same is true with prostitution. There is none. Albert told me the bishop does not want it. Hence, the bishop, who is one of the two co-princes, forbids and impedes any prostitution. And if you look carefully at the newspaper kiosk, every form of pornography. It is true that the Catholic Church has lost much of its influence it still had before 1993. But I was stupefied that simply the will of a clerical, who in reality was only a representative head of state, would be capable of preventing the spread of the mighty porn industry. On the other hand, you can buy condoms in every supermarket, and you find them at the checkout exactly where in other countries chewing gum and chocolates are usually offered. And listen, if Andorran men really want a hooker, they take their car and drive to the south, to the Catalan city of Seu d'Urgell, where they can find what they are looking for. By the way, Seu d'Urgell is the domicile of the bishop. The search for the non-existent nightlife looks like a sport of the tourists I encountered on the street. The first day of my sojourn, I met a Czech who participated in the symposium about voice technologies on the internet and who tried to explore Andorra la Vella and Las Escaldas in the evening. He was looking for a city center, similar to what he was familiar with from Prague or even Vienna. It was hard for him to believe that Andorra is just too small to meet his expectations. He appeared sad as I revealed to him that there was no nightlife of the sort. Some days later, I discovered the Czech translation of a novel by Antoni Murey, which brought back a smile to my face. However, I knew that the Czech had already returned to his country. Many thanks for your attendance. See you soon. Bye.